Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on time of day that you are watching this. Um, I've been getting some questions lately on my thoughts about leasing on to a carrier. And I thought, hey, what a wonderful time to uh, like share my opinion about being leased onto a carrier since I am an owner operator that leases my equipment on to a carrier. And let's talk about the experience and, that I have had and the things that I think are good about being leased onto a carrier right now in the current freight market we're in. So yeah, stay tuned. Well, most of you already know that I am leased onto a carrier. I don't discuss the carrier's name due to the carrier's request that I don't share that out, out on YouTube. However, um, if you watch trucking YouTube, you probably know who, who DIY Semi is, trucking and more. I'll leave the description, or I'll leave in the description the link to his channel in case you don't know who he is. Um, I am leased onto his carrier. Um, now let's talk about some pros that I see with being leased on to a carrier versus me operating my own authority. Now I'll put a disclaimer out there. I have never been a carrier. Um, I have been an owner operator for two years now. And for those two years, I have been leased on to another carrier, meaning his name, his DOT numbers, all the information is in, in his name, not in my name. Um, so first and foremost, let's talk about the number one thing that I like about being leased onto a carrier. I get paid regardless if the carrier does or not. That's number one. Um, every load I haul, I get paid for, even if the carrier doesn't get paid for it. And hopefully if you're running on your own authority, you've never experienced a broker not paying you, but it happens and it happens more than we like to say or think. So number one would be no matter what, I'm getting paid. Um, the second benefit I see to being leased onto a carrier right now is especially with the rise in fuel prices, um, the carrier you're leased onto probably has pretty good fuel discounts at your big local or your big chain truck stops. I know the carrier that I'm leased onto operates two different types of fuel cards, an EFS, and a com data. Now as a contractor, I'm allowed to purchase fuel any way I please. I do not have to purchase it through the con or through the carrier. I can do it on mud flap or like I have my own credit card and I have my own EFS card. But for the most part, uh the carrier's discounts that he gets through that I receive through his company Com data and EFS cards usually blow everything else out of the water. So there's two things. The number three thing that I think is very important when you're looking for a company to lease onto is, does that carrier have customers? Right now in the freight market, customers are key. Like they are, they are what is allowing me as an owner operator to be super successful right now when a lot of people are struggling. So when you're looking and thinking about, hey, do I get my own authority? Understand that if you get your own authority, you're not gonna have as quick of access to customer freight that pays really good um, in a down market and you're, you're gonna have more availability on the loads that you wanna haul being leased onto a carrier that's been in the industry for a long time. Um, at least that's my opinion and that's what I've experienced in the two years of being leased on to a carrier. Um, here's the thing, the carrier has already put in all the work, has made all the phone calls, has done everything. My responsibility is A, to contact the customer and say I'm available to haul their load and haul the load. I don't have to do any of the legwork to get the freight. Now I need to haul that freight and do it in a timely manner and I need to be resp responsible and respectful to the customers because it does reflect on the carrier. Um, another thing I find great about a carrier that I'm leased onto that I know other carriers do the same is the carrier's credit is my credit. Now what do I mean by that? Well, the carrier that I'm leased onto has connections with 
tire places, shops, trailer repair places, all kinds of places the carrier has made connections with to get low, low rates on parts, low shop fees, and I'm able, as a contractor, at least on to that carrier, to take advantage of all those things. I bring my, trucks, my truck to those places to get worked on, and let's say I didn't bring my checkbook, right? And I'm at one of these places. They allow me to take the equipment away from their shop and go make money because of the carrier I'm leased on to. The carrier has good credit and good relationships with these people that allows me to use it and then pay for it later if that makes sense. Now, that's not a habit I get into. I usually pay everything up front, but there has been times I, I haven't had cash or I haven't had my checkbook with me and some of these places are small places and don't take credit, like credit cards, so I've had to pay later. Or the carrier pays it and I re reimburse the carrier. Um, there's lots of things right now in this down market that if you're struggling, you might wanna take a hard look at maybe leasing onto a carrier and running maybe their trailer or things like that. Now understand that there are percentages usually. Um, oh, first, let me take a step back. There's a couple of ways you can lease onto a carrier. Um, what I think works best for me in the long game is always being paid percentage, um, a percentage of the load. Um, and that's gonna be worked out between you and your carrier. It could be a 60-40, it could be a 70-30, it could be an 80-20, it could be a 90-10 like me. Or that there are carriers that pay a flat mileage rate plus an adjustable fuel surcharge, which right now might benefit you. You know, if you can haul if if you can haul freight for two dollars and forty cents a mile, there is a carrier that's close to where I live that that's what they're paying their independent contractors right now. The average is like two forty a mile, and if you operate a truck that gets pretty good fuel economy and you know the lane you like to run the lanes, you can be profitable at all miles paying two dollars and forty cents a mile. I mean. If you're not, if you cannot be profitable at that, you should take a step back and maybe look at things with your business. But I think in the long game, for me, getting paid percentage is is gives me the ability to make more money when the market is booming, and maybe make a little less when the market's not so good. Now, here's the other thing that I found very good about the carrier that I chose to lease onto when I became an owner operator instead of running out and getting my own authority. There is a lot of behind the scenes, back office, compliance, all kinds of things that go with operating your own carrier and having your own MC number. Um, the carrier takes care of all that for me. I don't have to do any of it. Um, you know, I don't pay some fees that other people pay. I don't pay for my ELD. I don't pay for my toll device. Um, there, there's lots of positives with leasing on to a carrier. Some carriers have fixed costs that you receive a percentage and then you pay a fixed cost to that carrier every week or every settlement. The carrier I'm leased on to doesn't have that. Um, so it's straight 90-10 split. What does that mean? Well, that means that me as the independent contractor keeps 90% of whatever my truck generates. The carrier keeps 10. Um, so yeah, there, there's lots of things. Let's talk about insurance. Um, if you're leased on to a carrier, you're usually carrying uh, cheaper insurance than you would if you had your own authority. I pay Bobtail insurance, that replacement value on the truck and things like that, and that's super, super low. And I know what my insurance premium would be if I decided to go out and get my own authority because I've contacted my insurance agent that I have all my bobtail insurance through. So I know I'm saving tens, well, not tens of thousands. I am saving thousands of dollars a year by being leased on to a carrier. And right now in this down, down market, like it makes sense to try and save more money, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, there, there are many benefits to being leased on to a carrier. 
Now, one thing that gets overlooked a lot with being leased on to carriers, and I think YouTube's a little bit to blame for this, is everybody wants to dispatch themselves, right? Let's say you've been a company guy or girl like I was for 20 years. You want the ability to dispatch yourself and say no. Well, let me tell you something here. Self-dispatching is not something that's super easy to do, especially if you don't have knowledge of the industry and you don't have knowledge of lanes and what lanes pay because lanes adjust quarterly, weekly, monthly, um, seasonally. And I think it's a good idea that if you lease on to a carrier as a new owner operator and that carrier has dispatch, work with that dispatch team for a while. You can still say no on loads and you can still say, I don't wanna to go to certain areas, but allow a dispatcher to work with you. Allow a dispatcher that understands lanes and understands the rate fluctuation in those lanes to, to help you pick out your best loads because it's gonna benefit you. You're not gonna sit for multiple days trying to find a load because you're overbidding lanes. Um, now, like me, I do self-dispatch, but I'm also very, very familiar with the lanes I run. When I started as an owner operator, I picked a couple of lanes and just ran them. Um, and still to this day, there's really only three lanes that I run, and I know the highs and lows of those lanes. I know anytime I see a load on the load board, and it's going, take for example right now, Allentown, Pennsylvania and it's leaving Stevens Point, Wisconsin. I typically know it's only going to two places, so I know the mileage, I know whether I have to pay tolls or not, I know everything about the load just by kind of looking at it, and then I have to call and get more information like the commodity and temp and weight and things like that, but I understand the lanes. I have knowledge in what I am doing. Um, don't jump into this and just go gun ho because you're going to put yourself behind the eight ball. You're going to put yourselves in an area that have, hold on one second, maybe really bad freight market, but the you were chasing the dollar and that three or four or five thousand dollar load looks so good that you chased it and you put yourself in an area where you're going to have to deadhead hundreds of miles to get your next load or take something for $1.50 a mile. Um, allow a dispatch service to work with you. And I would also suggest that if you're thinking about becoming an owner operator and want to lease on to a carrier, ask the carrier questions. Ask the carrier, do you have customers? If that carrier has company drivers, ask if they allow independent contractors to haul customer freight. If they tell you no, I, I would suggest moving on. Um, the spot market is designed for one thing. It's designed for an outbound load to your customer or a inbound load to your customer, meaning like a backhaul. Um, if I had a customer in Wisconsin that delivered all the time into Pennsylvania, well then I would, I would take my customer freight from Wisconsin to Pennsylvania and then work the spot market to get back to my customer. That is what the spot market is designed for, people. It's not designed to really like function as your main tool in booking your freight. Um, relationships are key in this industry. I've learned that over my 23 years of, of working in this industry, how important relationships really are. So yeah, like I think in, especially in this down market, some people are calling it a recession. And if you're struggling, I would highly, highly recommend that you make a change and you make a change today. And maybe if you're new, if you're a new authority or you're having trouble making enough money to pay all the fees and costs that accrued with you operating your own authority, there's no shame in putting that on pause and finding a good carrier to lease onto. There's lots of them out there. I mean, we all watch Cash's King Trucking, right? Check out his channel. Like he he has found, I'm stealing his line here, but slow and steady. That's the name of the game, man. Like I know within 
honestly like 500 to a thousand dollars not even that big of a swing i know every time i turn the truck on and start doing my work typically what i'm going to make in a week because i do the same thing is does it get boring running the same highways yes it does but i love the consistency i love the slow and steady because i can grow on slow and steady when when other people are struggling or might be even failing um so yeah take the time to do the research find a good carrier to lease on to like i said before i believe you're long in the long haul working on percentage gives you the availability to make more money but let's say you have very low operating costs and you can be a profitable at 240 a mile there's lots of companies that are paying that right now you know their mileage rate might be you know 70 80 or a dollar 70 or a dollar 80 a mile but you might get 70 78 cents in um, fuel surcharge on top of that for every mile you drive like I said, I know there's a company in my, like right outside the city I live that their drivers, their independent contractors are averaging like 240 or 250 a mile, I think is what they were telling me. Because I called just to see what they could offer me. Um, you know, but if you find a good carrier to lease onto, treat that carrier like it's your own. Respect the name that is on the side of the truck. Because somebody worked really, really hard for the name on the side of their on the side of that truck on your truck to grow their carrier. Somebody worked extremely hard. Be respectful of that DOT number, the MC number, and the name on the side of your truck. Because here's the other thing: say you're leased onto a carrier and you don't really care that if you get a bunch of speeding tickets or something like that because it's not your carrier, right? You don't care about the insurance hikes and things like that because you can leave that carrier. Well, here's the thing. It affects every contractor that is leased onto that carrier. Keep that in mind. If you're out here driving like an idiot and it's not your numbers and things like that and you think you can just walk away, well, you're affecting the next guy. You're affecting a team player that works for the same carrier you are. So treat that carrier, the name on the side of the truck, like it's yours. Anyways, hope this video was informational. Give me a thumbs up. And until next time, you know what it is. Keep on trucking.